Welcome to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And now we have, uh, we're going to be discussing a very important topic that affects every, every one of us, uh, 100, more than 100 million Filipinos. It affects our everyday lives, our present, and our future. And we're talking about the state of education in the Philippines. And we have with us, none other than uh, the person heading our Department of Education, Brother, Luis, Brother Armin Luistro, the Secretary of Education. Sir, welcome po. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Brother Armin, you were here uh, when you first started. Five you years hit ago. The, you, hit, you hit the ground running. Tapos, pinag-usapan natin noon. I mean, uh, uh, what your plans were. Now, uh, let's have a quick review. What was happening when you stepped in as Secretary of Education? What was the state of education then? Well, I, I clearly remember that um, uh, when I came in, the, uh, the very perception of DepEd was like, it, it was one of the worst uh, uh, portfolios in the, in the cabinet. Um, corruption was, was part of the regular feature of, um, of the news whenever DepEd was included. And the perennial question, uh, uh, problems about lack of classrooms, teachers, books, toilets, etc. No? And, and, and essentially, the, the morale in the department was, at its, uh, was very low. No? So uh, uh, one of the most important tasks for me was to understand where to start. And because the, uh, uh, I, I was a newbie and um, uh, first time in government, and it was critical that we're able to move things uh, at least to a hopeful uh, uh, tone rather than uh, a pessimistic one. So, you were I rem one of the things that I remember during your first interview. Of course, kulang ang classrooms, kulang ang mga teachers, and then uh, you said we will, I will fix this during my watch, and you said a couple of years and it will be done. Kailan ay yung interview niyo? Was it 2010, 2011? It, it was in 2010. Um, okay. Uh, during that period, uh, actually, the president already gave us uh, his mandate. Uh, to, ma to make sure that we're able to fix what was wrong and, and what was lacking, in this, in, the, in this case, on education. Uh, but the first task we had to do was to actually do the counting. I ilan ba talaga yung kulang na classrooms? Ilan ba talaga yung kulang na teachers? No? And um, we identified five major inputs. Teachers, classrooms, seats, textbooks, and uh, 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 toilet facilities. No? Uh, but just to give you an example of how quickly this administration was able to respond to it, while, while it looked like a very humongous thing to, to deal with, um, the administration was able to actually supply the needed budget to address at least the five uh, critical inputs. And, and to give an example, I was just looking at my end term report. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm preparing my end term report. And I just realized by the end of the Aquino administration, we would have funded and built 185,000 classrooms and hired uh, more than 231,000 teachers. Um, to put that in perspective, our total number of teachers prior to this administration was around 500,000. So you kind of uh, 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 increase the number of, 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 your, of your, the real core uh, uh, soldiers of the department uh, several uh, times over. No? Classrooms, mm -hmm. we were building, Jerry, uh, something like at most 8,000 classrooms per year. Okay. Uh, uh, during this six year period, we would have built uh, 185,000. So um, you could look at this administration and say, just in terms of funding, uh, 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 the government was able to provide all the needed national funds for education. And, and you'll see that in the actual budget. We started with 173 billion, mm -hmm. and, and we're now at 433 billion. Wow, more so, than double, um, huh? um, The support per student, if you just computed the per student per year, it would have gone from around 9,700 to now to close to seven to 20,000 per student per year. So you mean to tell me, the problem, no? uh, brother Armin, was kulang sa budget. I mean, your yung uh, past uh, dep ed heads. Well. Uh, essentially, yes, ah, okay. but, but as we were looking at the program, the other major deficiency 
was in the curriculum itself. Ah, okay. So whatever you, you put into uh, as, as an investment on education, our 10-year undergrad uh, pre-university curriculum was never um, uh, accepted globally as, as, a, as sufficient for university uh, uh, level. Um, so we've had uh, scholars from the university going to Japan, the US, and, and they look at their curriculum and say, you lack two more years. Take mm. up uh, uh, college before we get you into first year, or something like that. Uh, our um, engineers in the Middle East, Thailand, Singapore, are not able to move up because uh, when they look at their CVs, they lack the necessary two years. So part of the, the inputs needed were also a, a, a total um, um, uh, review of the whole curriculum itself. And that's why we went, Jerry, into uh, K-12 mm -hmm. reform, which thankfully uh, the Supreme Court um, did not grant a TRO uh, for suspension. But so total by on, uh, Brother Armin, uh, we are one of two countries na hindi pa kayo 12, three. Sino yun, sino, sino? The other two is Chad and Djibouti, both in, in Africa. Yes, oh, the oh. Philippines was the only one in Asia. Would I you see. believe that at the time, Myanmar already had 11 years okay. of pre-university. We oh. were still at 10. Okay. But, Jerry, you, you went through an excellent uh, private school mm -hmm. that actually had more or less 12 years. Okay. And that's why when you went to the university, you were already 18. Mm -hmm. Part of our problem was those that were in the public schools and that like 90% of the population only had uh, uh, 10 years. And so wh what I could not accept was the fact that public school students competed with private school students and the private school students got into our big state universities. I don't think because you were more intelligent than those in the public schools. I think it's because we were not able to provide them with, with the same equalizer mm -hmm. that would have allowed them to compete uh, with the rest. No? But, 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 but that's what we, we tried to do with the K-12 reform. No? That, um, uh, first of all, that our, our students in the public schools would have kinder. Uh, secondly, that they will have the additional two years that they lacked uh, before they go into the university. Okay, so uh, you would say that a feather in your cap Sadep Ed would be would have been to start the K to twelve, pero hindi pa kompleto ito, no? Itong K to twelve. I mean, it's running. Thankfully, oh. by uh, June of this year, okay, before the president steps down, okay. we would have started the senior high school. That's grade eleven. Okay, and we would have uh, started the reform in grade five. So, because we did the the simultaneous mm -hmm. two uh, uh, every year uh, uh, change of the curriculum, so we would have the full curriculum in place by 2018. Okay. Now, Brother Armin, bakit, I mean, just uh, talking about that, bakit parang wala naman problema ang mga Pilipino finding jobs abroad? I mean, whether it's technical, whether it's managerial, how come there was no problem then? I mean, as a, ano lang, um, hindsight. Um, mm. I think they, they easily got into a job. The problem was promotions. Ah, if you okay. if you uh, if you looked mm. at the um, uh, our engineers and our, our doctors, no, the problem was really moving up, no, because because they have the, the, the competence, but promotion re would require a review of, of your qualifications and, and your um, uh, CVs, no? and and the the global standards over the past five six years have become a little more rigid, because countries would compare uh, uh, what, whatever uh, qualifications one would have across the different uh, nations. So mm. it's only in the past uh, decade that, that um, the different uh, sectors now would have a common reference point. And that's why we're, we're even now we're talking about a qualifications framework that allows m job mobility. Mm -hmm. and, and, and because of, uh, Filipinos have become very mobile, um, they will now start looking at our credentials, including uh, transcripts of records. Okay. But I think the most important thing, Mr. Secretary, is uh, you are now saying that we are not lacking in our classrooms, we are not lacking in and we are also not lacking in teachers. Is that right? We, uh, we actually included mm -hmm. new programs like kinder, 
and now 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. And we are building more classrooms as we speak okay. for those new programs. Okay. What we addressed in, in, in the last, uh, the first three years ending in December 2013 was the backlog of okay. classrooms uh -huh. prior to this administration. Because we should have been building at least maybe 20,000 classrooms every year. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and in my estimate, that's, that's how we should be uh, the, the regular pace for, for, uh, for us. Uh, um, we should have hired a lot more teachers before. No? So what we did was we caught up with, with, with the deficiencies of the past year, and we regularly supply uh, the needs for the additional two years. By, by 2017, by next year, there will be no more mass construction of classrooms and no more mass hiring of teachers because what we'll be doing is we would have been more or less around 700,000 mm. strong uh, uh, and, and our uh, teacher to student ratio would be down to 1 to 35, 37 um, and, and therefore we'll, we'll be okay. We just need to uh, hire those that uh, are vacated by those that retire. No? Pero uh, Mr. Secretary, importante nito, whoever succeeds you will continue your programs. I hope so. Di I ba? Hope so. Because kung hindi, hindi na naman makakahabol, atras pa. Di ba? Ngayon, ngayon brother, uh, Armin, uh, I guess this is just sa jari lang ba ito? Because every time uh, opening of classes, lagi may picture na mga, yung mga estudyante nasa ilalim ng puno, di ba? Like uh, 60, 70 students, 80 students, 100 students, one teacher. So, ano ba ito? Sa jaryo lang ba ito? Hindi ba talaga nangyayari ito? I mean, I, I, I yeah. actually challenge those, uh, 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 those, those reports at least in the last two years. Mm -hmm. okay. Prior to that, uh, maybe that was still uh, the reality in, in the field. But, but I, really, I really challenge anyone who can show me that there is a class in the Philippines mm -hmm. that still has... 65, 70? Uh, I, I don't think that that's any more happening. And if that is the case, I will personally go to that school and ensure that that uh, will, will, will not continue because we have the capacity to, to bring in and intervene. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we, we have teachers. We, have, we can put up a makeshift classroom in, in two weeks' time while we're waiting for a more permanent classroom. Um, in the prior to this administration, there, the, you won't believe this, but there were some schools with four shifts. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, um, wow. We've brought down uh, that uh, to most schools now are on one shift, uh, except a few on two shifts, and that is generally confined to NCR mm. uh, in the big uh, uh, congested city. So uh, even in terms of, of the shifting of, uh, of, of sessions in the school, um, I think we've, we've done uh, so much more. Um, the challenge is, if anyone can uh, show me a, a, a classroom that is not uh, according to the standard spec, um, we at the very least, Deppet will give him a hard time. So okay. look for that. <laughs> okay, so we have with us uh, the Secretary of Education of the Republic of the Philippines, Brother Armin Luistro. We're talking about the state, state of education and uh, we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And again, our uh, topic for uh, this program is State of Education. And we have with us none other than the Secretary of, of Education himself, Brother Armin Luistro. So, Brother Armin, uh, we were uh, talking earlier about K-12. And uh, marami pa rin tumututul sa K-12 kasi they're saying, sabi ng mga parents, na nako, extra gastos and all that. Ngayon, of course, that's a given. I mean, plus two more years, definitely you spend more. Pero ngayon, one of the highlights of uh, K-12 is the use of uh, the dialect dun sa lugar na yon as a medium of instruction. Could you tell us more about this? It is a uh, uh, part of the shift of, mm. of DepEd to actually move from a teacher-dependent curriculum into one that truly puts the, the learner at the center. No? And, and if we were to be honest, every child that comes into a formal school brings with him or her the language at home. Mm. No? 
And uh, um, the most difficult adjustment of, of a child is if you speak to him in a language that's foreign. So, kung bisaya yan at si teacher kinausap yung bata, sinabi, magandang umaga. Mm. The first impression of the child is, this is not home for me. Okay. So, um, what we did was, we did a policy that we must use the language that the child is comfortable with. And the big treasure in the Philippines is that we have 177 languages. Okay. Not dialects. Languages. These are oh. full languages. Yeah. Um, we could not do, Jerry, the full 177. But on our first uh, few years, we did at least 19 of those uh, major languages. We developed original stories. We, di we didn't translate Cinderella stories into Cebuano or Bicol. We, we, we culled the, uh, the original stories from, from the culture, local culture. Um, we p made our own, uh, uh, sometimes if there were no dictionaries, we, we did something like that. And for the first time, I think the students, I, I saw it with my own eyes. Uh, kinder students were raising their hands and asking questions of the teachers because they can use a language that they thought the teacher also understood and they were very comfortable with. So even from that standpoint, the students now are very, very active and they are engaging the teachers mm -hmm. as early as kinder up to grade three. No? So that, that's critical. No? But at the same time, we teach them Filipino and English mm -hmm. as a separate subject. Ah, okay. So oh. it's, it's not that, that we forget those. No? We, we teach the basic concepts of, of health, science, math in their mother tongue, but we have a separate subject in English and Filipino as early as grade one. Was this your personal innovation? or a No, no, it's not a personal innovation. Oh. UNESCO is advocating ah, okay. the use of the mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Um, Brother Andrew, my predecessor also from La Salle, was an advocate of, mm -hmm. um, of uh, the use of lingua franca. And, uh, but you know, as you know, this is a very sensitive issue. Uh, I just thank God that um, during those early years of K-12, uh, either people were looking at the other direction, but today, we, when I go around the provinces, everyone's embracing and recognizing that um, the local culture, language, and, and traditions are so critical in the, in, in the revision of our curriculum. Now, how many uh, languages or dialects are you currently using all over the Philippines? Cur currently, 19, uh, 19 are okay. in the... Uh, in the uh, we, we have developed uh, uh, modules for those. Okay. Um, we have maybe, I'd say, another... You can double that number mm -hmm. because what divisions actually did was to start writing uh, uh, new modules of the other languages that are not among the 19 uh, because they had students there. And I was, I was happy when I found out about it. Now the, on the initiative of the teachers, they started, w would you believe uh, we have collected maybe 2,000 original stories wow. from <laughs> all of these uh, uh, different languages. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 I just need somebody to just pull them together. I mean, that's a wonderful treasure. Of course, of, oh. of the of the country, national treasure. Yeah, yeah. two thousand original, think, uh, 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 Original I mean, stories from even one half is already yeah, yeah. amazing, and in, in two thousand, mm -hmm. incredible. I mean, wow, wonderful, wonderful is the word. Leon, uh, I remember before uh, they were also discussing things like I don't have this part of K to twelve. But whatever the main source of livelihood in that region or that province, will, uh, you will focus on it and uh, you will teach it. Like for instance, if it's a, a fishing village, if it's yeah. agricultural, if it's... Uh, ano itong program na ito? At kasama ba ito? I mean, is it really part of K-12? Well, uh, uh, what we have in, in the, in the K-12 curriculum is a national curriculum. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, and that we determine the competencies, but those are minimum standards. But that is premised on learning happens, Jerry, from a pedagogical point of view. If we, the starting point should be where, what we are familiar with. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's consistent with, do we teach Jose Rizal and Apolinario Mabini first because they're national heroes? Or do we first teach them uh, the local heroes 
who are not yet in our textbooks. Okay. The, the Ilocano heroes, mm -hmm. the Visayan. Uh, uh, um, in, in science, we do the same thing. No? We, we don't teach them about the highfalutin stuff of living things. If you're in Tawi-Tawi, maybe you first learn about the lobster, which is the common fare mm -hmm. every day. No? If you're in, in Quezon, maybe the germination is taught using a coconut. Mm -hmm. And if you're in Bicol, you, you use a pili nut. No? Um, um, we start with the local. And that's exactly what we also do with the career paths when they go to senior high school. Mm -hmm. We look for, we don't have a, a, a listing of what uh, uh, is common in the Philippines. What we ask is, if you are in, um, in a coastal area, what are the, uh, uh, the resources there and the industries that we should prepare our students for? No? And, and, and we choose, we are very selective about the, the, the specializations and the tracks so that it is kind of, it matches what, what is the local need, interest, and resources. No? So this is actually going on right now? Uh, especially in the senior oh. high school. Okay. So uh, uh, you may have a an ecotourism type of program for provinces where there's very little industry, but you have wonderful natural resources no? okay. in tourist areas. No? Um, if you are in Cebu and or Davao, where you have a call center industry, then we, we identify a, a, a uh, you know a BPO type of senior high school curriculum where they can actually go and, and on OJT to that nearby uh, area. Because in the past, Jerry, what happened was you identified the list of, of courses where we need graduates to mm -hmm. supply. No? And so what happens? If you're educated and you're successful, from the provinces, you go to the big cities. And that's why we have all these problems with traffic mm. and congestion because all of the, the, the re good jobs are in the cities. So we said, I, I don't want to be part of this, uh, th this problem in the future. If we want to create new programs in education, we'll have to create them in the localities, and they must supply the local needs. For example, in um, the rice terraces area, we realized that we needed graduates who can actually know, have the know-how to preserve the rice terraces. So Gohang National High School created a, a, a senior high school specifically for the preservation of the rice terraces. I'm from Lipa. Uh, it used to be a villa during the Spanish times for coffee. But Cavite has overtaken Lipa in, in terms of coffee plantations. So if, in order to revive the coffee industry, we created a Lipa Coffee Academy that specializes in Liberica. And Deped ito? Deped. Okay. Uh, precisely because mm. we wanted uh, what is local to be, to be developed and, and we bring in programs that will allow graduates of, of, the, of these programs to actually work in the locality rather than look for jobs in the big cities. So, Mr. Secretary, you started this during your watch. I mean, prior to you, wala nyan. Well, because we did not have a senior high school. Yes. Yeah, uh, so. Everyone who went through um, high elementary and high school prior to the K-12 to went through exactly the same program. Ayon, no. You were in Tawi-Tawi, you were singing the mm. same Bahay Kubo as the one in uh, Cebu, in Bicol. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that's good and nice. But the, the truth is, um, education will have to be contextualized, anchored on what is local. And, and that's why I, I think um, we, we've kind of forgotten in our search for being Filipino. We look for what is common, but we forgot about those unique traditions that are, are right there in, in the ground. No? And, and education, I think, should, should kind of blend the two. Okay. Ground every Filipino in what is local my native language, my culture, etc., my family, but at the same time connect him with that common thing that makes us all Filipinos. I, I think uh, the, the big discovery is if we do that, then we'll realize we'll, we, we will be at par with the rest of the world. And, and uh, this may sound like I'm bragging, but if, if, we, if we have time to kind of fine tune, because mm. I'll have to admit the curriculum now is, is, is in a, on its first years of implementation, its first cycles. Uh, we cannot perfect it. 
But if we're able to have the time to kind of redo the cycles and fine tune the curriculum, we would have one of the best curriculums in the whole world. No? I, I think we, we, we would be very proud of the curriculum that is gawa ng Pilipino, kayang tapatan ng kahit ano sa mundo. Well, to me, but na yan nangyayari. <laughs> no? It's been like, uh, I've, I've heard of uh, so many cases, even before K-12, to lalo na ngayon may K-12, to but prior to K-12, to I've heard of uh, so many instances wherein uh, Filipino students who go abroad, who go uh, to North America, to, who go to Australia, who even go to Europe, pagdating nila ron, excel sila. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they are at the top of their class. Paano nangyari, paano nangyari doon? Mababa standards sila? Mas mataas ang atin? What happened? I, the, the Filipinos are excellent. It's in our DNA <laughs> to be able to adapt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The only difference in what we're doing now is, in the past, to excel, you'd have to be an American. Ah. To speak the right slang of English, we actually adapted the, the, the American English. Mm. Okay. Um, what we're doing in the, in the curriculum is, you don't have to do that. Um, to learn algebra, it is possible for you to understand the weaving patterns of our Ifugao uh, weavers. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is an algebraic equation yes, there. Yes, yes. Oh, oh. uh, to understand hydrophonics, it is possible for a student in Gohang National High School to understand the thinking and the water systems of the 2,000 or so year old uh, rice ah, terraces. Okay. No? There is engineering and there is uh, agriculture um, that's being taught, but not in the books of our indigenous cultures. No? Um, what we're saying is those local cultures, those Mindanao traditions, can actually be the very laboratory for deep thinking, for research, even for, for livelihood and for marketing and, you know, at, and, and, and jobs. No? And, um, if we're able to, first of all, discover and bring education to, to actually work with the local industry, with the local culture, we will be able to bring the Filipino uh, uh, knowledge uh, and, and we'll discover without much effort that we are at par with the rest of the world and rather than us going to other countries, we want to invite all of these mm. uh, other researchers to come and know how we do things here. No? And nangyayari na yan yata ngayon, Mr. Secretary. I mean, uh, we see more and more of our Asian neighbors, even our Western neighbors, coming to our universities, di ba? Sa uh, UP, UST, La Sala, Ateneo, and all of the other, UE, nagpupunta rito para mag-aral. Uh, yes, but also partly because our, our um, tuition for private universities and, and state universities are still um, uh, very affordable for many of them. Ah, okay. But not because they want to learn the Filipino way yet. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I think that's what we want to reach. No? We, we want them to come because they, they want to discover and research about, uh, let's say, the rice terraces or, or let's say how we make basi wine, for example. Okay. Um, you know, gusto natin, no? Now, they, they come here not just because it's convenient, but because there is, some, and there, is a, there is an environment where they can only learn those competencies here in the Philippines. Okay. So, State of Education in the Philippines. And we have with us the Secretary of Education, Brother Armin Luistro. And we'll be back. Uh, we'll be uh, talking about uh, a little bit more about K-12. to And then we'll be asking uh, the Secretary of Education about his achievements during his watch. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And uh, we are discussing now the state of education. And uh, we have with us, of course, the Secretary of Education, Brother Armin Luistro. So, Mr. Secretary, uh, what would you say has been your achievement during your watch? I, I, I don't look at myself as, the, um, uh, as even the champion or leader. I, I see myself as, well, I think one of my gifts is I'm able to bring in good people uh, and, and I'm able to create an environment where we can work together rather than work at opposite, uh, 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 towards opposite goals. Um, I have an excellent team 
of undersecretaries and assistant secretaries in the Department of Education. I, always, I pride myself by saying um, uh, the president gave me a, a totally free hand, no political uh, pressure mm -hmm. for anything in the department, provided us with all the necessary budget. In fact, our problem, uh, Jerry, is, is a ab absorptive capacity to hire the teachers and build the classrooms mm -hmm. uh, uh, in time. Um, and, and I have an excellent executive uh, uh, team with me. Um, and that's why we were able to pursue this. Uh, during the past five years, uh, we were able to bring in a lot of our stakeholders, our um, uh, for corporations supporting DepEd. No? Um, for example, our yearly uh, Brigada Escuela brings in at least 8 billion pesos from the private sector, helping the schools in their maintenance uh, and their preparations for the coming school year. No? Um, we have one of the most successful implementation of the PPP early on in the Aquino mm -hmm. administration before bridges and airports were uh, were being done the PPP style DepEd was one of the first agencies that was able to pursue the uh, mass construction of classrooms using the PPP model um, we were able to engage I think mm -hmm. successfully um, our suppliers contractors uh, who in the past, I think they themselves will admit, um, have not had a uh, very good um, engagement with DepEd, and where most of the uh, the uh, the complaints were about uh, corruption mm -hmm. uh, on both sides, I'd say, uh, uh, both on the side of industry trying to corrupt and bribe DepEd officials, and on the other uh, DepEd officials asking from them. Uh, I, th I think there is a, a, a wonderful um, environment now where they trust DepEd a little bit more. And I think we've been able to institutionalize a, a system whereby um, we communicate with them that we don't need any of your, uh, of your extra money uh, for, for any of our officials. In fact, you will win this particular uh, uh, bidding by sheer merit. So, uh, Mr. Secretary, it is uh, very safe to say that in your watch, talagang nabawasan ang corruption. Hindi, I'm sure hindi naman natanggal 100%. Hindi siguro na wala lahat. Yeah. Yes, but uh, to uh, ano, 50%, I mean, can you quantify this? I, I, I would hmm. say, oh. I, I would say 80, 85%. And then oh. I'll, I'll tell you one example. Books that we bought, textbooks that mm -hmm. we reprinted during our time. This was a time of, of, of um, um, Yusek Francis Varela who passed away. Uh, we were buying books that the five years prior to that were we the department bought at maybe 150 mm -hmm. pesos we were able to buy at maybe 30 25 pesos <laughs> so you know and we have many examples of that oh. uh, where um, it is possible to engage um, the industry and tell them because I met with them and I told mm -hmm. them I am told that you have 40 percent jack up prices mm -hmm. because th that's exactly how uh, the 40 percent is distributed from the top all the way to the lowly security guard mm -hmm. i said um, why don't you remove that all of these uh, rebates and uh, and, and uh, marketing um, uh, items in your budget just give us the lowest possible price i will assure you that none of my officials Will, will need or will get anything from you. And, and I think they responded. I see, would you like to mention any of these uh, kasama dito sa PPP? I think uh, here's a good opportunity to mention the outstanding uh, people and organizations who have actually helped the DepEd. Who well, will, no, no. They they, we, in our first oh. PPP, we, um, we had um, the Megawide okay. as well as the, um, uh, the BF uh, Corporation of, of Bayani Fernando. Uh, those were the two winning ah, okay. uh, uh, corporations. Um, they, they did the first um, uh, launch of, of PPP. The PPP Center of um, uh, uh, Director Canilao, mm -hmm. Cosette Canilao, uh, actually worked on that. But the template for the PPP is there. Mm -hmm. And we were able to, not without any problems and challenges, but we were able to successfully 
build at least uh, maybe 20,000 classrooms in one go. No? We may not need to build that much every year from henceforth, no? but, but at the very least we were able to show that it is possible to do that on an, using another model rather than just the single uh, uh, designed classrooms every time. No? So Secretary Luistro, now uh, let's look to the future. What is the best scenario or what would you wish for the DepEd to have uh, in this coming 5 to 10, 20 years? I always say that the next revolution in education will be bringing in IT mm -hmm. and making sure that it, it becomes a part of the real tool, the essential tool for learning. If in the past we were bringing in um, computers so that the students can know and have an experience of how to use a computer, we need to bring the computer into the classroom. In this administration, we were able to um, supply, as part of uh, the program, every single school, including those that are unenergized, with at least one package of computers. Okay. So oh. that every student naman can um, actually use the computer with an initial minimum target of one hour per week. Okay. Th that, I mean, you can laugh that off and say, ano ba naman yan? But but that's already when you have 47,000 schools okay. uh -huh. and 8,000 schools without electricity. <laughs> that is already a major uh, accomplishment for the department. And this is happening? It, it, it is happening. Okay. We, we're doing the procurement. Uh, all high schools now have a, uh, have, have a computer package. In the succeeding years, we need to continue to increase the, the ratio per student. Uh, but what is critical is IT should now be the, the main tool so that we bring in all the resources, um, uh, textbooks, um, and if there are errors, you could actually just uh, uh, edit it in real time, mm -hmm. uh, update it, um, and provide them with an unlimited uh, resource. Except the challenge is, uh, how do you connect the schools? Because you need to work online. Uh, and, yes. and I think oh. that that's part of the sad reality when we came in, there was, there was an NBN, ZTE uh, mm -hmm. network that was supposed to connect the countries. DepEd would have been the, the real beneficiary there. But I hope in the next administration, we will be able to put up a broadband or at least a connectivity where our schools can access, which our schools can access, and which will now be the next revolution in education. Okay. Ano ba pinakamalaking problema ngayon? What's the biggest problem now of DepEd? I mean, uh, apparently, wala na tayong problema sa budget. I mean, you are uh, uh, well, uh, funded. well well funded. Ayan. So, anong pinakaproblema ngayon? If any at all. No, the, 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 the next stage mm -hmm. is actually further enculturating the curriculum. Ah, okay. What we have is the, the, the national curriculum. Uh, we've started the process of, of asking our teachers every province uh, looking at the curriculum and saying if this is how you teach uh, 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 this competency how do you teach it in this province because it has to be a little more uh, uh, contextualized there no? um, that will require fine-tuning the curriculum no? but secondly in tandem with that is the real <laughs> you and I know that the real um, heart of education is really our teachers so um, no curriculum will be effective unless our teachers are supported. Yes, with a higher, higher pay, uh, but also with more resources that they can access so that they can become more creative. No? So uh, I dream of the day when, when all of our schools will be connected, will we have good uh, bandwidth, and can actually not only download uh, materials for the use of their classes, but can also upload and do a hopefully a wiki Pinoy where uh, we do a, a, a crowdsourcing of the best materials, video, any teacher who does the best uh, lessons in algebra or, or equations um, so that other students who are having a difficult time can actually access it, including those that are doing home study. Mm -hmm. Why confine education to those who are in school? Uh, uh, we want a curriculum, and you can do that when you have a a, a, and a functional IT program mm -hmm. that, that connects all of the islands and you know, all of the schools in the Philippines. Okay, now 
Uh, very briefly, uh, Mr. Secretary, we're talking about hiring uh, hundreds of thousands of teachers, but uh, what is the DEPE doing about the competency of these teachers that you're hiring? I mean, about how do you make sure that you are getting quality teachers, hiring quality teachers? The good thing is selectivity in the country. Um, I, think, I think you can look at it from uh, two points of view. We only get around 10% of those who apply. Uh, uh, this is both the, the basic requirement is actually the licensure exam of teachers. No? But uh, maybe, maybe a little higher, maybe 10 to 15% of, of the actual pool of, mm. of teachers nationwide. So in terms of selectivity, uh, there's a natural uh, 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 feature that allows us to hire the best and the brightest. No? Number two, um, the truth is many of the teachers in the private schools are transferring to DepEd. So that's a sign that even if our salaries may need to keep increasing for some time, we are already very competitive with the private schools, the private uh -huh. sector. No? And, and therefore, um, the, the capability of government to hire the teachers in the field that are uh, 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 on the top rank. No? And, and thirdly, we have a, a very good ranking system that now hopefully has been um, cleaned up uh, because there were allegations before of uh, paying off uh, the, the, the ad local administrator so that I get into uh, and, and become hired. Um, now we have a, a, a very uh, transparent system whereby uh, those who apply will, will be evaluated, they get a demo class, and then you only take the top rank. Now you cannot uh, hire somebody from, from the bottom. Okay, Mr. Secretary, we'll be uh, winding up our program. Ano po bang message niyo sa ating mga kababayan? I mean, as far as education is concerned? Well, um, uh, we're very happy that the, at least the temporary setting order of the Supreme Court uh, uh, was not granted, uh, suspending K-12, and therefore we'll, we're full throttle ahead with the last leg. Ito na po yung last leg of the, of the K-12 reform, which is really the senior high school. Our um, registration of 1.3 million students, graduates of grade 10, are already in place. The last remaining months of the Aquino administration, we are pursuing all of our efforts towards it, making sure that all grade 10 students will be enrolling by, by June 13 in a senior high school of their choice. No? And together with that, we, we are doing our last mile efforts, meaning Everyone else, every Filipino you see in the streets or in the mountains, if you ask them, have you finished high school or elementary, and they have not, DepEd has the capacity now to offer them an alternative learning system, various modes so that they can finish at the very least high school. Uh, we entreat everyone to help us with this major program called Abu Talam, and hopefully this will be the legacy that we will be passing on to the next administration na walang Pilipino sana na ma hindi makatapos ng high school. No? And, and uh, DepEd will do everything we can to make sure that this country will be a, a country of educated Filipinos. Okay, with that, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Jerry. Thank At uh, napaka-importante po ng education. I mean, it affects uh, every aspect of our life. You know, whether it's uh, uh, spiritual, financial, moral, political, lahat po yan pinaka foundation yan would be the proper education so it is uh, very very important na suportahan po natin ang uh, magaling at tamang edukasyon sa Pilipinas so with that i'm Jerry Cornell till next week then take care i love you god bless you